Welcome to the Living Word, the teaching ministry of Pastor Fisayo Adeniyi, lead pastor of the Ransomed House Lagos. Get ready for enlightenment, encounter, and impartations by the Word. Be blessed as you listen. Hello, Merry, Merry Christmas to you. I'm super excited at Christmas, and there are reasons for that. Christmas is that time where there is good food. And I tell people, there is no better way to eat good food than to eat it in a relaxed way. And that's what Christmas guarantees. What is Christmas without sumptuous meal? I hope your fried rice is good with jollof rice. I hope your chicken is fine. Or at the least you have planned to really go out, visit friends, visit family, and just enjoy yourself. Like the ritual for me is, if I can, there must be found the end this day. And I'm excited. I'm super excited. Merry Christmas to you again. I pray for you that you have a beautiful Christmas full of love, full of joy, full of grace and exceeding bliss. Even in the name of Jesus, Merry Christmas again. Now let's go to another sumptuous meal we will need on an unusual Christmas Sunday. That means the Sunday of Christmas comes once in seven years. So this is a Sunday of Christmas. And I want to bring to you the sumptuous spiritual meal, even of God's water, for just a little while. Sit back. It's going to bless your life. Listen, open your scriptures. If you have one to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and then verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and then verse 15. Um, Paul here was trying to describe, he wrote a letter to the Christians at Corinth and he was trying to describe the magnanimity or, or the gift that Jesus represented in the world. And listen to this, he said, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. So taking a note from Paul, I want to speak very shortly on Jesus, the indescribable gift. Jesus the indescribable gift. Father, thank you for the entrance of the word. Give light, give understanding unto the simple. Thank you for the gift of your son. Father, as we go into your word, Father, let your word distill upon our spirits. Let us be able to run with your word. After now, make us better people. We've not gathered for culture, for tradition, but to learn at your feet. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name and amen. Jesus, the indescribable gift. You know, I, I, I met many people and um, we'll talk about uh, their love language. People talk about words of affirmation, they talk about quality time, uh, and, and then some people talk about gift. Uh, um, I know a few folks who said gift does not do anything to me. I don't think there is anybody that gift does not do anything to you uh, because gift has a way of touching us in a different way. If you say, you know, gift is not just, I don't love gifts. Maybe you don't love it, but you like it. Uh, let's talk about, if you say no, probably we try you with a Toyota Prado, uh, 2021. And let's just pack that in front of your house right now. You discover you like gifts. Another thing, another thing is, uh, what if you get you a house, somebody give you a gift of a house at Asokoro in Abuja, you will suddenly just like gift. So maybe what you don't like about gift is the quality, uh, of the gifts. Um, today we are celebrating the best gift uh, humanity has ever been given. It's not just a gift to me. It's not just a gift to you. It's a gift that humanity has been given. And there's no gift that will ever surpass even the gift of Jesus, uh, even to the world. Uh, I like to start by speaking on the things we should know about gifts. Uh, number one is that gifts delight the soul. We are in the Christmas season. And one of the things that happened during this season is that there's a lot of gifts uh, going around, ampers. Uh, if you value people, you give gifts to them. You try to let them know, I appreciate you even in my life. And this is fine. We are emulating the gift uh, that God had given. Uh, and what does that give? It delights us. It brings laughter. Uh, I, I, every time I see my children uh, go under the tree and try to open or wrap their gift uh, and say, Daddy, what's in my gift? Then when they see the joy, Joy on their face, just priceless, priceless, priceless. Number two, gift possesses characteristics. I could ask you to describe the best gift you have ever been given. Um, some people say it's a laptop, and I mean it's a Dell laptop. It's it's gray in color. Uh, some people say, ah, oh, my best gift is a shoe because they have color, they have shape. Uh, 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 what does it look like? You can explain that. What color does it look like? How much does it cost? Uh, uh, these, these are characteristics that gifts are. 
And Paul was talking about Jesus being the indescribable gift. And you begin to talk about the color of Christ or, or, the, or the shape of Christ or, or how much is the value of Christ. Uh, but then I'm, I'm, I'm overreaching myself here. Number three, every gift costs the giver a sin. Uh, you remember David was speaking uh, and he was talking to the prophet. He said to him, uh, um, I will not give God, Second Samuel 24 and then verse 24. He said, I will not give God that which I won't offer him. I'll give you an offering that does not cost you. Uh, he was talking about the fact that if you are giving a gift, the gift must cost you. And, and, and that's what I've discovered about gifts, that gifts will always cost the giver. It will always cost the giver. Uh, whether you don't value it, whether you think it is cheap, uh, it has cost the giver something. And uh, this points to an important element, uh, and that's the element of sacrifice uh, when it comes to giving of gifts. Uh, sacrifice. Uh, every gift is given with an element of sacrifice uh, because they have to forgo a thing uh, in order to get you even that thing. Number four, gifts are given according to ability. The gift you are giving tells you the capacity of the giver. So you cannot come and say, you know, see what he gave me. You know his value. You know how much he hands or what he has. It is accepted, Jesus said, according to that which a man has. So it is what you have. And the gift of Christ was made possible because God has the son. Without God having the son, he would not be able to give us the gift of the son. So it tells us the capacity of the father. What does he have? Number five, the giver of gifts gives gift that is valuable to the receiver. Now, this is very key. Uh, at certain times, I don't know whether you have ever been in that spot when you want to give gift to somebody, but but you 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 are just perplexed. You don't know the kind of gift to give them, especially if they are um, rich or wealthy. It seems like they have everything they need. Uh, I remember when those days we want to just buy something for my father in the Lord. And one of the things we say is, what do we buy? Uh, myself and my wife can be on this for like a month because you can, we think, well, I, I know, I know where he puts his shoes. There are plenty of shoes. You can buy him a Bible. You, you can buy him, can buy him native attires. He has plenty of that. So you, you begin to wonder, what can you give him that will serve a purpose? Uh, because you want that gift to be valuable to the person you are giving them to. Uh, it can't be such a task. Uh, 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 but, but this is the gist of all. Uh, it, it's the fact that the gift of Christ uh, is it's valuable to us that receive it. It was also valuable to him that gave it. Uh, and now let's talk about God's indescribable gift. God also gave a gift, not to a man, but to the whole of humanity. It is the gift of Christ. Uh, John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved uh, the world that he gave uh, you see, that's a gift. He gave. Who did he give? What did he give? What did he give? He gave his only begotten son. That's what he gave. He gave his only son. That's amazing sacrifice. The gift of Jesus to the world shows the heart of the Father to the world. Somebody said, I don't know if the Father loves me. I say, you don't need anyone to tell you of the love of the Father. If you can look at the sacrifice of Jesus, if you can look at the fact that Jesus came, then you can tell. That you are the beloved of the Father. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. Paul was trying to describe the amazing gift of the Father. And he said, Oh, thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Uh, oh, it was the new living translation that says that the gift is too much for words. Uh, I mean, you don't you can't even find the word to describe what the gift of Christ is. John 1 John chapter 4 verse 10 the Bible says not that we first love him but that he loved us and then he made his son the propitiation even for our sins. He made the son the price, the gift of the son was needed for you and I to live a sinless life. Romans chapter 8 verse 32, scripture says that even after giving his son, how shall he not together with him? He who did not spare his only son, how shall he not together with him give us all things to enjoy? The gift that God has given you, the best gift that God will give you is not in your future. It is in the past. The best gift of God is what he has given humanity. Is the gift of Jesus. The best gift is not tomorrow. The best gift is already given. And every other gift follows after this gift that God has given. It's the gift he has given you and I. And it's the gift we are remembering and we are celebrating even today. Listen to this. God gave his son, his only son. Let that sink in. Let, let it sink in. God gave his son, his only son. 
Where that sinking? It's easy for God to give uh, if he had plenty sons. Uh, if he had like a thousand sons, uh, you wouldn't really call that a sacrifice, right? But he gave his only son, his only begotten of the father. That's what the father gave. He gave his best. He gave his all. That's what he gave. He gave himself. He gave his all. The gift of Christ speaks of, of God giving everything. He gave all. He gave himself. That's how important humanity is, uh, even to God. You and I are so paramount in the scheme of things. We are paramount in the heart of God. We are important to him. And that's why he gave his best gift. The gift of Jesus was never about any physical characteristics. It was about the power and the grace of God. That's what the gift is about. It's about the power and the grace of Christ. Don't forget I'm speaking about Jesus, the indescribable gift. God gave his best gift first. So that nothing he gives hereafter can ever surpass what he has already given. He gave his best gift. Or, or you say, oh, you know, he first of all gave me a, 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 a Mercedes 230. Now he's giving me a Mercedes Benz formatic. Now you could say there is an appreciation in value. There is, there is a, an improvement in what he's giving. No, God actually stepped out, gave Jesus, so that everything he will give you after the gift of Jesus is lower to what he's given. That, that's anti the way man works. The way we are set to operate is that we give gifts in an ascending manner of value. So that when you're first meeting somebody, you first of all give them a certain gift and then you begin to improve it over time. But God's gifts cannot be improved upon. Hallelujah. Jesus' gifts cannot be improved upon. He gave his best so that you and I can live even in the assuredness even of his promise. Amen. God gave his best gift. Listen to this. When Jesus came, Israel wanted redemption from the oppressive rule. God gave redemption from the power behind all oppressive regime and forces, the devil. Israel wanted deliverance from an oppressive regime, Rome. But God gave redemption from the power behind all oppressive regime and forces, the devil. I've got news for you this Christmas. It is not the power against the nation. It's not the people. It is not uh, the system. It is not the sector. It is the power behind every evil regime that God is after. And I declare tonight, I declare today, this morning on this Christmas morning, uh, on this resurrection morning, that the end has come to every evil that backs up evil regime uh, in the nations of the half in the name of Jesus. Uh. Today I want to speak about that perfect gift, that awesome gift. Uh, this Christmas they want to, like Paul of old, uh, want to say thank God for the gift, uh, two wonderful four words, uh, the gift of Jesus. I want to tell you very quickly as I begin to round up this morning, salient truth about the gift of Jesus. Salient truth about the gift of Jesus. Number one is the fact that this gift, the eternal relevance of this gift. The eternal relevance of this gift. This gift is eternally relevant for all times, for all people, for all people of all ages and for all seasons. The gift of Jesus is relevant. It's not that today is relevant, tomorrow it will no longer be relevant. It's, really, it's relevant. Jesus said in John 14 verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He didn't say, I was the way. He didn't say, for now, I am the way. He said, I am the way. All eternity is the way. In the 18th century, is the way. In the 15th century, is the way. In 400 years after now, he is the way. Jesus is the way. The truth and the lie. Jesus is the way. I call it the gift that keeps giving. The capacity to meet the eternal needs of man in every place and at all times, wherever you are. The gift of Christ is eternally relevant to you. I have received gifts that were of value to me for certain periods of my life. But you know, if you give me those gifts now, they are not of value to me anymore. They, they, they don't have value. They, they have lost their relevance. That means that certain gifts are relevant even in season. So there are seasonal values as it concerns gifts. But the gift of Jesus is eternally relevant for all times and for all seasons. Let me say this to you. There is no gift that can last generations impart generations and still be relevant uh, like the indescribable gift of Christ. There is no gift that can last generation, impart generation and still be relevant like the indescribable gift of Christ. 
It was relevant in the life of Peter. It was relevant in the life of Timothy. It was relevant uh, even in the life of Agabus. It was relevant uh, in the life of Hemisempola. Uh, uh, it was relevant in the life of Smith Wigglesworth. Relevant uh, in the life uh, even uh, of Kennedy Hagen. Relevant in our days, even in my life, in your life. Uh, it is relevant. Uh, Jesus is as relevant in Ontario as he is relevant in Lagos. He is relevant in Abuja as he is in Maduguri. God, Jesus is relevant. He is the gift that has an eternal relevance. Jesus is as much needed in the palace as he is needed in the slum. Jesus is as much needed even with kings as he is needed even with servants. He is a gift that lasts all ages. Bible says every good gift, every perfect gift comes from above. From the Father of light, who will no braveness, neither shadow of turning. And when the owner and the giver of the perfect gift will first of all give unto man, he gave his best, he gave his son. He gave Jesus uh, the internal relevance of this gift, perhaps, was the reason Paul was speaking and saying, you know what? Thank God for this indescribable gift. Uh, it's indescribable because of his internal relevance. The gift of Jesus, uh, it's eternally relevant. Number two is the cost of the gift. The cost of this gift. Uh, this gift is cost alone. It's, it, it's a cost, it's a costly gift. Uh, it's a costly gift. The gift of Christ is a costly gift. And, and that's why I smile when people turn the place of, of the church. I will begin to have fun and say, it's amusing. It, no, 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 no. It cost him his life. It costed him his life. We cannot play with the gift of Jesus. The gift of Jesus costed him his life. John chapter 10 and then verse 11. He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Gives his life. And he gave his life for the, sheep, for the sheep. He gave his life for us. Verse 15 of that same scripture. Uh, the Bible says in verse 15. He uh, said, as the father knows me even so I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus laid down his life. So this is a gift that costed him his life. I doubt that you will give a gift that will cost you your life. I doubt it. You know, even when you tell somebody you love them, you don't mean you will die for them. Even when you say, I, I love you, I can die for you, you don't mean you try. You don't. You don't. So Jesus' gift actually costed him his life. Oh, that was the gift of Christ. He, 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 what he gave was he gave his life. He gave his life. Matthew 20, 28. Scripture says the Son of Man has not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom to many. Praise the Lord. You are in the ransom now? Oh God, glory to God. To give his life as a ransom to men. You can see the cost. It costed him his life. I tell people, your salvation is of eternal relevance. Your salvation is of much value. You are not bought with the blood of bulls, of goats, or of chickens. You are bought with the blood of the Son of God. The only Son of God. He became flesh, dwelt amongst us. It was so okay for him to dwell amongst us, but he did much more than that. He died for us. The gift of Christ, the gift of Christ, the gift of Christ. He, he was the answer to eternal life. Number three, it's also the impact of this gift. This gift is important because of the impact of the gift. The impact of this gift of all eternity, through all eternity, the gift is important. The gift is important. The gift of Jesus, the impact. Can I ask you this day, can you think of a world without Christ? Can you think of a world without Jesus? How would that world look like? A world without Jesus. Jesus said, 14.6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Have you ever wondered what a world without Jesus would look like? It would be crazy. Very crazy. It means a world without truth. It is the way. A world without direction. Not knowing the way to the Father. A world without salvation. A world without life. Eternal life, a world that is destined for destruction. That's the word. But thanks be to God. A Jesusless world is a crazy word. I don't want to live in that world. I, I don't want to think about that word. It's a moralless world. It's a world full of wickedness. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Oh, I've summed the life without Christ up in three words. The kind of world without Christ. A word, it, it's a word without Christ 
is a word without hope. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two, a word without Christ is a word without grace. There will be no showing of grace. Everybody will receive what they deserve. There wouldn't be grace speaking. There will be people gracious. It's also a word without truth. A word without love. A word without truth. Can I make it fall? A word even without hope. It will be despair without Jesus. He will be despair without Jesus. A Christless word is a damned word. I can say that to anybody, that a Christless word is a damn word. I know we live in a time, in a season where people just uh, want to push back the name of Jesus. They want to push back the impact of Christ. But can I say this to you, that a Christless word is a damned word. A Christless life is a damned life. A life without Jesus is a life without hope. A life without Jesus is a life without life. A life without Jesus is a life without grace. A life without Jesus is a life without truth. Come to him. Come to him. Come to him. You find hope. You find grace. You find life. You find truth with him. With him. With him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number four, the purpose of this gift. We're talking about the indescribable gift that Jesus represents. The purpose of this gift is salvation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The main reason he came, the main purpose for his coming, Salvation. Salvation. It's what Romans chapter 10, but verse 8. The Bible says uh, that for we know that with the heart man believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Listen, what do you believe? You believe in Jesus as being Lord. If you would believe that Jesus is Lord and you will confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. That's what verse 9 says. Listen, we need to understand that. The scripture is there for you to believe. Jesus is the way. He's not one of the ways. Not like some preachers say. <laughs> they ask them, is Jesus the way? And they were stammering, st stammering. No, Jesus is the way. That's what he said. You can't be a believer in Christ and be rearranging the gospel. You can't be a believer in Christ and be rearranging the Bible. What makes up believing him is the Bible. And Jesus said in the scriptures, clearly, explicitly, I am the way. He didn't say I am one of the ways. The truth and the life. The purpose of this gift is salvation. The grace of God on salvation has appeared unto all men. How did he appear? He appeared in the person of Christ. Titus 2 verse 11. How did he appear? He appeared in the person of Christ. This is the necessity of the gift. Salvation of the world. Number five. In this gift, all other gifts consist. I love this. I love this. Hallelujah. In the gift of Christ, all the other gifts consist. In the gift of Jesus, all the other gifts consist. Do you want the best of God? Do you want things from God? First, you must accept this first gift. I remember uh, uh, a lady came to me and said, does God have favorite in our church? He said, does God have favorite? I said, I don't understand. He said, why is he not answering my prayers? I said, but I, I pray today. And then you give your life to Jesus. He said, yes. I said, when you were praying before, you were not known in the house. Mercy was the only thing that will make your prayers to be answered. I said, now go and pray as a, as a daughter, as a son of God. Go pray now and you will find the answer. And she did. That same week, God did a miracle for her. God did a miracle for her. That's to show you that the first gift that God has and he has given to all. If you don't accept that gift first, you may not be able to take other things from God. It is in him that all things consist. It is in him that all things exist. It is in Jesus that the fullness of all the blessings of the Godhead consist. If you will refuse the gift of Jesus, you will also not be able to take other things from God. And finally, number six, uh, what makes this gift indescribable is the unworthiness of the receiver. I don't know whether you have given gifts to people before and then um, they feel, you, you feel like they, you, you feel like they're not, they're, they're not worth the gift. Like, I'm not sure I should even give them that gift, but let me just give them. That, 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 that starts saying that they don't, they don't, they don't deserve it. They really don't deserve it, but I'll just give it to them because 
but but they don't really deserve you. Do you know we do that once in a while, but that's not the norm. That's not the norm. The norm is that we give gifts to appreciate people who deserve it. That's the norm. That's how humanity works. In fact, when we give gifts or help people who don't deserve it, we have a word for you. We call it charity. We call it charity. We call it charity. We, we just say this is it's not like you deserve it, but I'm just giving you because I'm showing Christ. I'm a Christ person. I'm showing Jesus. I'm just living for Christ. That, that's what you do. That's what you say. It's not our normal way of living. Romans chapter 5, 7 to 8. I want to show you something there. Bible says that for scarcely for a righteous man we won't die. Yet perhaps for a good man somewhat we even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners. It means that we were enemies of God. That's when he died. He said, much more than having now be justified. By his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For even when, verse 10 says, for even when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God. That means that you and I were enemies. We were strangers from the covenant of promise. We were not part of the commonwealth of Israel. We were not part of the house. For the love of Christ. We were in deserving his best, but he died for us. Not that we first loved him, but he loved us. Be the son, the propitiation for our sins. We give gifts to people who we want to show that we appreciate them, we love them. That's why we give gifts. But listen, Jesus' gift was given to us when we don't even deserve it. And that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. It's an indescribable gift, the gift of Jesus. There's so much wrapped into him. So much wrapped into him. I remember the day I began to follow Jesus. And after some months, I felt I knew him. I felt I knew him. But I, I, I discovered later that I entered again into another depth of revelation. So I've discovered that the more of him you know, the more there is to know. The more of him you come to, the more there is to come to. Jesus is a gift, is a person that can never be consumed to the end. You can't finish him. You can't see him finish, like what they say in the street in Nigeria. You can't. You can't know him all. There is still more to know. The more you know, the more there is to know. How do you describe this gift that they gave you and you have been unraveling for more than 20 years? I know people who have been unraveling Christ for more than 40 years. I know people who have been unraveling Christ for more than 40 years and they are still learning deep things. They are still learning new things. What a gift. What a gift. What a gift. It's been more than 10 years. 15 years now of trying to know Jesus. Of following hard after him. Of, of trying to understand what it means to be Jesus. Of what it means uh, to be a follower of Christ. Of what it means uh, to be a pursuer after him. To, to, to live and pattern your life after him. To be an imitator of Christ. And I can tell you, I have not fully know him. And I'm not sure there's anybody on this side of eternity that will fully be able to unravel even this gift that is amazing. I've preached and I've come to the end of this sermon. But I think I've done it. This is one of the sermons that I think I've not done a very good job. <laughs> Why? Because I, I try to describe the indescribable gift. I try to describe the gift that is too marvelous for words. The United States say it's too wonderful for words. What a gift. What a gift we have in him. What a gift we have in him. I've spoken so much, yet I still feel there's so much to say out of that which I know. And there's still so much that I do not know. What a gift. What a gift. That on that day in Jerusalem, on that day in Israel, in that manger, the Savior of the world was born. On that day in a manger, there was no place for him in the heat. The Savior of the world was found. It didn't look like it. It didn't look rich. It didn't look wealthy. It didn't look like it's going to influence the world. It didn't even look powerful. But God is in the small things. When God starts out, he starts out small. He starts out in an unusual manner. You would expect him to have been born in a palace, probably in Rome. But he was born by Virgin Mary. What a God. What a king that we serve. 
It's such an opportunity to spend Christmas again just remembering this gift, remembering all that Jesus has, all that Jesus means to us, all that Jesus is to us. And I want you in all of the eating and all of the everything you do, I want you to take out time today to do what Paul said. And that's how we end today. today. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. He said, thank God for this gift, too wonderful for words. Thank God for this gift, too wonderful for words. I don't know whether you have received the gift of Jesus, but there is no greater gift. Somebody says, you know, I need healing. I, I, I need God to heal me. I need God to help me on my vocation, in my job, in my career. I can't guarantee the help of God except you receive the first one that he has given to all men. And that one is not dependent on prayer. It's not dependent on your calling. It's not dependent on your anointing. It's the gift of Jesus. Wherever you are, Jesus can reach out to you. You can reach out to him because he's not far from you. It is you that you have been far from him. It will be a pleasure this Christmas morning if you will say, you know what, Fisaya, PFA, you know what? I'd like to give my life to Jesus. I'd like to be a part even of the people of God. I'd like to be part even of this common word of Zion. I'd like to be a member even of this household of faith. I would like to be part, even of the Jesus family. If that is what you're saying, if that is your voice today, I'd like to pray with you. I'd like to pray with you. Can you, wherever you are, can you just close your eyes and say this prayer with me? Everlasting Father, thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross, even for my sins. I believe that Jesus is Lord. I confess him as Lord over my life. I know that I'm a new creature. All things are past and all things are new. I open the door of my heart. Jesus, come in. Come into my heart. Live here. Dwell here. And let my life be a hope even for you. Hallelujah. If you have said that prayer, you've received the gift of Jesus. You've received the indescribable gift of Jesus. And I'm glad. And I'm super excited for you. I know that your life can never, never be the same again. Thank God for this gift. If you have not prayed that prayer, don't forget. As you eat your food, as you eat your meal, as you celebrate this amazing time, an amazing season. I want you to remember to thank God for the gift of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you for listening. This has been The Living Word. If you have been blessed by this teaching or for counseling or any other inquiry, kindly send us an email to pfa at the ransomedhouse.com or fisayoadeni at yahoo.com or please call 0912-772-3824. The Ransomed House, empowering people to live for Jesus.